Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and uh, in Kerbal Space Program 0.18, apparently a number of new Easter eggs were added for us to discover. So I, of course, set out on a mission with the ISA MapSat module to go and track these down. Uh, of course, so that you guys don't have to. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I built this nice space program. Probe, you see it here it's got a well, it's got a little chemical booster to get it out of carbon orbit, but um, it's actually ion powered largely. It has eight xenon tanks there. It has a mechanical jet there because you know what? When you're taking an hour to do a burn, it's very nice to have Meg Jeb do that for you. I'm sorry, I'm not going to spend 15 minutes in front of a computer doing something as trivial as pointing in one direction and burning. Regardless, look it works. <laughs> We're in orbit and we do some searching and immediately we find this new one near the Mar North Pole. Um, that's one of the more interesting ones. We will take a look at that later. But um, we uh, ultimately we send it to all the different planets but we only really found a new Easter egg on Kerbin. I haven't found anything elsewhere. So this is the one at the North Pole. From a distance you see it's a hemispherical, casts a shadow in the ground, what could it be? Well, we'll get out of our rocket and go a little closer to investigate. Seems to be on the other side of this ridge. It's a bit of a walk because, well, uh, I couldn't put it down closer manually. No, it seems to have some structure to it, but getting up close, it looks like a large saucer-shaped object with a central bulge. Hmm. Well, yeah, so this is obviously a UFO, and it kind of resembles the spacecraft from... Well, it reminds me a lot of The Thing, John Carpenter's version of The Thing. Uh, also note that you can uh, see that it is embedded in the ground using um, high-tech carbon viewing technology. <laughs> this is ground-penetrating radar, also known as clipping through the ground. Uh, the material is something weird that you can't walk on, so... Well, don't land on it. Anyway, um, <laughs> the second space center has been moved and is now on the north side of the desert. You can get there and land up on one of the ridges and take a quick tumble down into the valley. Don't try walking along. Well, be careful what you walk on over there because it's entirely possible you accidentally explode. Um, I tried walking along the road and something happened and I basically, my, my dude exploded. So anyway, yeah, that's easy enough to find. And actually, there's a new uh, base which is even closer. It's on one of the islands just off the coast. I mean, yeah, you've probably seen this in one of my previous videos. Uh, I did a preview for the Mitani.com and f showed this little air base. It has a runway which is a lot narrower and shorter than the one at Kerbal Space Center. So it's a little more of a challenge to get down on it, but I succeed here using this. This is a modified version of the Raven Spear. I just put a couple of extra air intakes on it because it, the, the stock one only has a single radial intake. And I much prefer to put a bicoupler on there and add some more uh, add some more ram intakes that way you can fly it up at 20 plus kilometers and fly it at great speeds anyway uh yeah it's a bit of a walk of course through the wonder of video we can get there momentarily and see what's in these hangars well nothing except for this one on the end <laughs> and we have a few familiar faces that have been sadly neglected in the new graphics of the latest versions we have the old engine the old capsule and an old fuel tank sitting there, rusting away at the end of their life. They will be missed. Although, I mean, it's interesting to note that they've rescaled the, the size of the, the module, the command module. Anyway, another one to find, a new one, in the desert, in the south side of the desert, in this kind of mountainous area. Uh, you can see a twinkling spot there. This is me coming into land. And... As we come in closer, it's going to become more obvious what there is here. You see there's a structure on the, on the ground, some sort of regular layout here. I'm going to just come down, following the autopilot. The autopilot's going to do the landing for me. I've just hidden it out of the way so you don't get to, to watch it. So we have at least six structures here, with a, one large one or with uh, four satellites, and then a smaller one out in front. 
and just coming down, we're like a six kilometers above it right now. Well, we're six kilometers altitude. It must be pretty big if we're seeing it from up, up here. Now, uh, those look like uh, stepped pyramids, also known as ziggurats, I, and I believe. <laughs> I'm not an expert on uh, these, on uh, architecture, but I believe ziggurat is the correct term. There's walls surrounding them. This is possibly some ancient ruins of the Kerbin civilization. Or maybe it's more. Maybe it has some sort of ancient alien technology to it. Off to the left, there is something weird going on with the landscape as well. So yeah, and coming down and, uh, well, I have a really nice landing site, but uh, I decide to be a smartass. And <laughs> with the aid of some of the Translatron, I thought, hey, let's try and put it on top of one of these on one of these pyramids, huh? And uh, <laughs> there we go. Isn't that great? So let's uh, get the dude out for a walk around and extend the ladder so we can get back on and take a step onto the highest point in this ancient civilization, these ancient ruins, and then end up laying down on the job. Um, so yeah, don't try walking around on top of them because there's something weird, some weird gravitational effect is meaning that you can't actually get up when you're lying on top of them. It's as if you're falling through the air, and it appears. And you can see that weird rip over there. It's almost like these pyramids have some mystical power which is tearing a, f a tearing a hole in the fabric of the planet almost. We shall investigate closer. After we take a look at this statue out front, uh, obviously another Kerbin, get a bit of a smile on his face. Although I don't think I've seen a Kerbal in the game with that hat. Maybe that is, maybe that's something from the Kerbalizer. Maybe this entire thing is the server farm which powers the Kerbalizer. Maybe that's what, something to consider. Yeah, giant stone statue thingy with spiky conical hat. Obviously not a spacesuit. Either that or it's a very high-tech spacesuit which has no faceplate. Oh, yep, running into the side of them. They are substantial enough from the side. You can't run through them, you just can't walk on them. Something up with that. Anyway, let's go and check out this tear in the fabric of the planet. Or maybe it's just uh maybe it's just a mirage. Look, you can see water in it and what's whiskey tango foxtrot! What? That's not cool. Oh yeah, and so other than other than the stuff in Corbin, there's one change on the moon. One of the arches, which was underground, is now above ground, and so I can fly under it finally. After all your smart ass comments, which I did prompt. Fair enough. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>